let you know what we're doing from a county perspective um, here regarding the coronavirus COVID-19. I want to um, extend the opportunity for uh, Chairperson Tommy Dunn to speak with you for just a moment. Thank you, David. Good morning. Uh, it's an opportunity to thank each and every y'all for being here today. We welcome y'all for coming on behalf of County Council. I want to thank the Council for being here. Uh, with this, uh, I want to thank our many partners for being here uh, throughout the community, our small towns surrounding us and the other people. Just big meetings about today, we've had several, several minor standing, a uh, good many phone calls, what's, what's happening, what's going on, we have a plan, so hopefully we can get many of those answers, questions answered today. I want to share everyone, uh, the county government is fully functioning, will continue to function. We're working hand in hand with the city of Anderson, appreciate the cooperation. We uh, work with Van Med, hand in hand. We've got all our partners here and all coming on and uh, uh, things, things will be, will be changing. I know as things goes on, we'll get more information, more information, but we uh, have, we're in the process of planning things and uh, putting our plan in place, working. So uh, again, I want to thank everybody coming and uh, hoping that this is going to make Anderson uh, safer. And this is I've heard of it back down with more people that's comments, hope to answer some questions and uh, uh, take your business. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, originally we had DHEC on the agenda for today, and as you guys can probably well imagine, they were extremely overwhelmed. Um, so that, so uh, one of the representatives was unable to be with us today to share some information. However, I'm going to turn it over to Steve Combs from my office, and he's going to share with you basically some up-to-date information from DHEC specifically so you can have some good situational awareness for what's going on locally as well as what's going on within the state. Thanks, sir. So, good morning, everybody. My name is Stephen Combs. I am one of two public information officers here at the Sheriff's Office. My specific role covers the Emergency Management Division, and, uh, you know, normally situations that emergency management faces are very finite. Uh, we can script messaging with respect to a natural disaster, um, an active assailant situation, and so much of what we're having to, to deal with right now is how do we help our public and the people that are working within our agencies better understand how to protect themselves. So this right now is the premier website for all information that's coming out across the state. I'm going to take you to a slide here. Make note of this. One of the things that's so important at this time is that people go to official verified location where information can be found. And the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, this is a public health situation. And so we will defer all of our, the questions related to health to those. They're the medical professionals. They're the ones who understand this and are working very closely with federal and other state agencies to ensure that the public is getting the information that they need to know. So this is the, the website where we're going to be directing all individuals seeking information with respect to this particular event. Uh, it is the DHEC website, and what I want to do is show our county representatives a place where you can go for some resources. I've actually printed up, I've printed some handouts that you can take with you and bring them back to your offices, and you can also duplicate them. But on one side is the DHEC recommendations for how to prevent uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, as many people are calling it. On the back side is that similar information that's provided by the CDC. So again, official verified information coming from official sources is what we want to continue to push out throughout all of our communications methods. So those are available up here when, you, uh, when we dismiss. I'll also make those available, but I want to take you to some very important resources with respect to that information. Uh, the current situation, and this is updated as of yesterday, you can see it at the top, at 60, uh, at 4.01 p.m. So the information there is current. They were, they're updating it as new information becomes available, and that is going to be the most reliable source for information for the state of South Carolina and for Anderson County as well as for all of our municipalities. So the, the, the information I want to point to our respective um, county organizations and our municipal organizations these are educational and outreach materials that you can make available across the state. 
Uh, no matter where you go, this information is being put out, and I encourage you to share it on your social media channels, on any websites that you have, and along with your, your current staff. You can print these materials out. They're, they're also in English and Spanish, and in some cases, uh, I guess, simplified Chinese, because we may have a population that needs that. We're also encouraging, if you scroll down the page, there are a couple of videos that can be shared through social media. Some of the county or municipal websites may not allow YouTube, which is where these particular videos reside, but the links do work. So if somebody wants to access that information through their, their mobile device, whether it's a tablet or a phone, they can still see those YouTube videos. And it just gives some additional information on the corona, the COVID-19 virus, as well as how to stop uh, spreading it. There's a great wealth of uh, social media graphics. DHEC has done a phenomenal job of providing quality graphics that we can share and get the word out. There's a lot of rumors that are out there right now, and we want you guys to help us to be influencers using your social media to drive people to correct information. If you see, last night as an example, I was scrolling through Facebook and came across a friend's post who said that a, a particular facility in the state was declaring a state of emergency. Um, and I quickly read that and reached out to my sources. And when I saw it, I said, this can't be correct. I hadn't heard this. Well, come to find out that person was sending it out as a joke. This is not a joke situation. This is, this is not a time for us to, to be making light of the subject because people's lives are at stake. And we have a responsibility as public uh, representatives to get them the correct information. We need to get them the correct information so that they can make the correct decisions for themselves and reassure them that everything is being done uh, to protect their safety. So all of these resources are out there. Again, it's the scdhec.gov slash COVID website. And I want to encourage you to go to that as a source for authorized, verified information. Uh, again, I can send these pieces of information out. I can provide uh, anybody who's interested that information, but this is gonna be the most reliable source. Any of the information that comes out from either emergency management or from the sheriff's office, all of that is going to be reflecting the DHEC um, recommendations and the CDC recommendations. What we don't wanna do is direct our community to multiple websites. We want to keep them going to a single source of information because if we begin to point them to multiple websites, it may confuse the message. And we want that information to be reinforced. Um, we know what we're doing. We're, we're working very hard to ensure the safety of our communities and those that work with us. And so this is going to be that source. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Director Baker. If we have any questions with respect to how do we get that information, please come see me after we get done here, and I'm more than happy to, to talk with you and help you get to this location or send you the resources if you're not able to download them yourself. Thank you, Steve. Now, I hope y'all didn't think y'all would make it today without getting a good PowerPoint educational <laughs> opportunity. I wouldn't be a good emergency management director for your county if I didn't take advantage of the opportunity to give you some educational um, sessions here. So what we have up here is we're going to kind of discuss specifically the workplace. You are the leaders of your specific uh, areas. We're relying on you to take this information back with you to share with your employees and keeping them safe in their workplace. Also pushing out what they can do at home. You're here. Uh, because we sent out an invitation for you to be here to share information with you. We're going to also share that same information that's going to be up here, as well as additional information for you to share, not only with your particular uh, employees, but with, for, for workplace, but also things that they can take with home. And I'm sorry, death by PowerPoint, but this, I promise you, it's just a couple of slides. We'll get through it quick, and, uh, and as I do appreciate you. Steve, if you can do All right, recommended strategies for employers. Um, you are the employers, your people are, 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 your, are, your, are your, uh, your, your workers. It's important that we take care of them. You know, what are we going to do um, if they're not there? You know, what, so we need, to, we need to do everything we can to, to ensure that at the workplace, we're doing everything to ensure their safety, um, for, for them to report to work, do what they do for you, and provide services to, to your respective areas and for the county. 
All right, we want to actively encourage sick people to stay home. It's super simple, super easy. If you're not feeling good, if you feel like that, that you've got some of the symptoms that we're going to discuss in just a few moments, flu-like symptoms, um, you know, we certainly don't want you coming to work and sharing those things with, work, with, with your fellow employees. Um, I know it sounds like good common sense. You've probably heard that message 200,000 times in the last couple of days, and you're probably going to hear it a bunch more. Again, I wouldn't be a good emergency manager if I didn't <coughs> echo that. All right, employees who have symptoms, uh, when they report to work, thank you. when they report to work, specifically high fever um, at 100. Thank you. 100 degrees point four or higher, um, signs of a fever or any other symptoms that, that might last up to 24 hours. Um, without the use of fever reducing or other symptom altering medicines such as cough suppressants, employees should notify their supervisor and stay home until they're no longer sick. Again, good common sense things, good practices to have. Keeping illness at home and not bringing it to the workplace is going to by far make the workplace a safer place to be. All right, next, we want to ensure that, uh, that your sick leave policies are flexible and consistent with public health guidance and that the employees are aware of these policies. Again, you know, at, at the county, we have our own policies. That's something we're going to have to look at. Go back to your respective uh, jurisdictions, uh, your workplaces, um, and, and review your policy. That, you know, because this is that time that we may need to look at potentially being a little bit flexible. If we're asking people to stay home, they're not feeling good, we may need to be a little bit flexible in our policies. It's just something to think about. Um, talk with the companies that provide your business with contract or temporary employees about their importance of sick employees staying home. You know, if, there, if other individuals are coming into your place of business and you're, you're enacting policies to, to keep your place safe, then naturally you want to have those good discussions with your partners uh, that, that are coming in as well. And again, this kind of gets to policies. Uh, you know, if you're asking people to stay at home and your policy is you might require a, a doctor's note after a certain amount of days, again, you know, you might want to review your policy. In this particular incident, you might be able, will be a little bit flexible, especially if individuals are staying home. Um, employers should maintain flexible policies that permit employees to stay home to care for sick family members. You know, we want to extend that opportunity for them to take care of home as well. It's very important. I know your employees, just like mine are to me, and, and I've got several umbrellas under the sheriff's office that report to me. My people are extremely important to me. I want them to be safe. I want them to go home to, for their homes to be safe. So we do need to take that into consideration. Separate sick employees. Naturally, <clears throat> if we have employees that do come into work and, and, and they come in, I'm extremely hard-headed if I come, if I, I don't burn many sick days. Um, if I'm not feeling well, I tend to, me personally, <coughs> tend to feel like I do better by getting up and going to work and working through it and that kind of stuff. The, you know, these are things that we've got to encourage our employees not to do. You know, because that might be your natural reaction to do and, and, and have been doing. That's been mine. And that's, that's what I've done throughout my life. However, it's bigger than me and, and what I've got going on. So it's very important that they take into consideration that when they come into work, that uh, you know, if they are sick, that we identify the fact that they are, pay attention to them, pay attention to what's going on, encourage your employees to check on their fellow, their other fellow employees. And if, if we do find that we've got some that are sick, instantly and immediately separate them. The CDC has the above recommendations up above, and I'm not gonna read all, all through that, but obviously we want to Encourage them, if, if anybody sneezes or coughs, cover their mouth. Make sure we have tons of Kleenex available, tons of uh, hand sanitizer, good anti-bacterial uh, soap, soap and water and a good 20-minute scrub, the CDC and, and DHEX advice. Seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Scrub. <laughs> would, would, uh, would definitely, most definitely take care of that. So, um, you know, the, that's one of those uh, just good common sense things. Keeping areas work clean, work areas clean, you know, we, we definitely want to encourage a good, safe, clean working environment to our people. 
It's very important for you guys as the employers to go back to enforce that. All right, getting into emphasizing staying at home when sick, respiratory etiquette, and hand hygiene by employees. Um, placing posters uh, throughout your businesses to encourage good habits. We certainly encourage you to do that. I think we've got some, um, some opportunities that we can share with you where you can receive those posters. They're easy to download and print and post. Um, they don't cost you a dime, they're very effective, and they give that good message to help reinforce what it is you're trying to do um, and what we encourage you to do in the workplace. Again, provide tons of tissues, um, disposable uh, receptacles. Most definitely want to have, and, and when I looked around my office when I did this particular slide, I realized real quick that, I, I, that I'm totally guilty in that fault. We need to have closures on those, those uh, trash cans. Because if individuals are blowing their nose and things like that and putting it in the trash can that's open, then, then it certainly opens up uh, other opportunities. So definitely need to have good closed trash bins and receptacles that, with a lid. All right, we want to instruct our employees to clean their hands often with alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains a, a 60 to 95% alcohol solution. Wash their hands with, with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, I got it right that time, <laughs> of, of good soap and water, and uh, prefer preferentially with hands or, uh, until they're visibly, uh, if they're visibly dirty. Make sure they're drying. Um, I, I know some workplaces commonly will hang a towel. That's probably not a good practice for, for you to have individuals sharing towels to dry their hands. But disposable products, paper towels, hand towels, things of that nature, are certain, certainly something that we encourage you to do. Want to be sure you're providing plenty of soap and water and alcohol-based hand rubs in the workplace. Ensure that adequate supplies are maintained. I know that's probably going to be a difficult thing right now because those things are flying off the shelf. So be sure that you're checking with your, with your providers and, and those that you uh, do business with and get these type of products that they have the ability to continue to supply. And if not, then you know, look for those alternative resources. Placing hand rubs in multiple locations is a great idea. As you can see, there, we've got some up here. Um, I, I'm the fortunate, proud grandfather of a brand new two, two year old or two day old baby. I have to say two years old. He's two days old as of today. Um, and as you can imagine, I'm a little, little, little sleep deprived because we've had a lot going on. Um, but what I loved to see when I was up visiting the hospital is it seemed like everywhere you turned, there was a hand washing station or, or, or some towelettes or something of that nature. Those are some important things to be thinking about. Constantly be looking, be vigilant, and identify locations throughout your workplace to do that kind of stuff. We want to get into the performing routine environmental cleaning. All right, all of us have, well, I say all of us, at, at my office, we are the cleaners. So, uh, because we're, we're not at the sheriff's office. So one of the things that we really need to do is to be sure that our surfaces, work stations, countertops, doorknobs, switches, any common areas or anything that we do in common areas is, is cleaned and, and cleaned thoroughly and cleaned often. We want to probably increase that, the, the, our normal routine and maintenance, um, and be sure that we're using good products that, that's going to get it good and cleaned and sanitized. No additional disinfection beyond routine cleaning is, rec is recommended at this time. Provide disposable wipes so that commonly, commonly used services are readily available. So if your employees do share stuff, Dispatch happens to be underneath me, so I, I make sure that each one of my workstations up there that they have plenty of wipes, uh, disinfectant sprays, things of that nature. So when they have the shift changes, they're sharing the same telephones, there's keyboards, things like that, that we're protecting each other uh, and, and they're looking out for each other uh, in that manner. I want to advise employees before traveling to certain, uh, before traveling to take certain steps. The CDC's uh, travel, traveler's health notices which was uh, one of the things, I don't know if you noticed it, when uh, Steve Combs pulled up the CDC's website, they had a section there that talks about travel. Be sure to pay attention to that. Encourage your employees to do the same, specifically if they're going to be traveling to other countries or now that we have some, some confirmed cases of the virus in areas of the United States, to definitely be checking on those particular areas. Um, and you also want to take into consideration if you have work type traveling that you may want to look at research and, 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 and consider and possibly reconsider where you're going to be sending your employees to for work type trips. 
Advise employees to check themselves for symptoms of acute respiratory illness before starting travel and, no and notify their supervisor and stay home if they're sick. Y'all probably are getting that common message, stay home if you're sick. Ensure employees who become sick while traveling or, or, or on temporary assignment understand that they should not notify their supervisor and should promptly call a health care provider for advice if needed. Good common sense. Right? Yes. I also want to jump in on that, just that particular note right there. Right now, uh, if an individual doesn't have a primary health care provider, uh, you can find information on the DHEC website. And it, MUSC and I believe Prism Health are both providing opportunities for tele, uh, telescreening. So what we don't want people doing right now is inundating hospitals and doctor's offices if they're sick. Uh, initially make that phone call. So uh, avail yourself to those free resources. And um, as you're going through that telescreening process, the doctor that, that you speak with will advise whether you should come in and be tested in, in, in that process. So. Um, Again, want to really emphasize, please call ahead or use those available services. Uh, if it is a life-threatening emergency, obviously we want you to, to act appropriately. But avail yourself to those free resources and uh, encourage neighbors, family, anybody who may not uh, have access to that, let them know that through the SCDHEC website they can get information on free telecare um, services. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stan. All right, if, if you do have anybody traveling outside the United States, uh, sick employees should follow your company's policy for obtaining medical care or contact a health care provider or overseas medical assistance company to assist them um, in finding appropriate health care. So if you do have individuals that are traveling abroad, it's very important that they also understand things that they should do um, while they are out of the country uh, and prior to returning back to work. Additional measures in response to currently occurring sporadic importations of the COVID-19. Employees who are well but uh, who have a sick family member at home with COVID-19 should notify their supervisor and refer to CT CDC guidance for how to conduct a risk assessment for their potential exposure. If an employee is confirmed to have COVID-19, <coughs> employers should inform fellow employees of their possible exposure to COVID-19 in the workplace, but main confidentiality is required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Employees exposed, exposed uh, to a coworker with confirmed COVID-19 should refer to CDC guidance for how to conduct a risk, risk assessment for their potential exposure. All right, we're going to skip the questions section for just a second because we're going to have some other discussions that kind of might prompt the opportunity for further discussion. Um, I wanted to share that with you because that is, see, that's straight from the CDC. And, and, and you're constantly hearing those same things. If you're sick, stay home. If you know somebody's sick, try to, sick, try to stay away from it. Washing your hands, cleaning, good hygiene. Um, you know, there's other resources that are out there too. We'll certainly share. There's something brand new where it talks about COVID-19 with pets, um, how to promote, uh, you know, good health and, and how to, to, to help you stay healthy, to help fight off of uh, any, any type of virus. You know, right now we're dealing not only with the COVID-19, but, but also it's flu season and it's allergy and sinus season. And I just spent two days in Columbia and pollen down there is falling like, like you wouldn't believe. So it was a tough time for me and I'm, I'm, I got more suit of bed than me right now. I'm just surprised I'm even standing still. Um, but, but it is, it's just one of those things that, that you know, it's, it's a tough time of year. So what I want to do right now, I want to talk about just real briefly some of the stuff that we've done from the county level, okay? We've, re we've reviewed both our county and state pandemic and infectious disease plans. These plans are right here. This is the county plan and this is the state plan. Now these plans were written for the purposes of handling situations um, and, and outbreaks such as this. A lot of time, energy, and efforts went into the making of these plans. The South Carolina DHEX plan um, is, a, is an 87-page plan. I encourage you, if you'd like to do so, go to the website and do it. I, I printed off and spent a good weekend reviewing and becoming extremely familiar with their updated plan. It's very good. Um, you know, we're, we're in constant communication with our DHEC officials. Um, conference calls with local and state officials getting updates, stay, trying to stay current as to what's going on so that we can make good decisions for us here in Anderson County. Um, we had an unusual or, or 
timing, I guess you could say, worked out right. Uh, SCHEMA, which is the South Carolina Emergency Managers Conference, took place last week, and, and we were down there with every emergency manager throughout the entire state having to be under one roof at the same time. And it was a unique opportunity for us to, as emergency managers, along with our state officials um, and, and some of the uh, uh, subject matter experts, happened to be able to sit in rooms and ask questions and, and talk about things that we needed to be concerned with here at, at the state level and at the local <coughs> level. We had uh, opportunities for, for Oconee County, Pickens County, Greenville County, Anderson County, um, where we all got together and discussed you know, what we needed to be looking for and doing up here in upstate. We are still in uh, constant communication, um, you know, even to this day. Um, as early as this morning, we had some good conversations. Uh, we updated our 911 emergency medical dispatch questions uh, to, to be consistent with. So if somebody calls in that we can possibly identify a potential patient that might have the COVID-19 so that we could take that information, pass it on to our first responders so that they could use it and, and, and do diligent care and how they uh, end up treating this or, or picking up this individual for treatment um, and transporting for, to the hospital. Additionally, we met with uh, AM Med. Um, in fact, we have a, another meeting scheduled for this afternoon with AM Med um, and uh, EMS to discuss uh, isolation or, or uh, quarantine treatment and, and those type of things that they've got in their plans, but also what, what it looks like past what their, their capacity might be so we could identify alternate, alternate locations and other places. Um, having a really good conversation there. Um, we, we met with EMS to discuss specifically transportation. Again, you know, once those calls come in through 911, a potential patient is identified, how that responder is going to respond to the call, and, and uh, that information would be passed on to EMS. We met with local, uh, or spoke with county administrator and staff members to discuss our continuity of operations and continuity of government. You know, those are things that, that you know, are very important, not just to Anderson County, but also to your own organization and your local government. So I strongly encourage you to, to look at what your continuity plans are. If something happens in order of secession, if something happens and you as the leader's not there, who is in charge after them? If they're not there, who is in charge after them? You know, what do you do and how do you handle if you have, we're encouraging sick individuals or people that are not feeling well not to come to work. And what do we do if we have a, 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 a pretty good number of our workforce that's not there at work and doesn't show up? How do we continue to offer services and provide uh, those things to our to our em uh, employees, but also for, for those individuals for whom we serve? So those are some important things to think about. Uh, spoke to your, our school districts to discuss some of their individual district plans, um, and I see different representatives from our district here with us today. We're going to begin with you next week, and we're going to be digging into your plans to start identifying potential gaps, uh, and, and we're going to actually reach out that opportunity and I'll talk about that in a minute with some of the things we're going to do. I will tell you, our school districts do a phenomenal job. I think you guys are in constant communication with the state superintendent. They're getting that good information down from the state level. Um, we've got a, a, a five great districts that do a phenomenal job here for us in Anderson County. Privileged to work with them. Um, we we uh, partic participated again in numerous uh, meetings and conference calls with both state and local officials. Met with our hazmat coordinator to discuss their updated infectious disease response plans. Um, he took a, a plan that, that they had existing for Ebola, looked at it to see what tweaks and changes needed to be made to that plan to make it a, a, a good plan for the COVID-19. And he has uh, uh, revised and sent me a copy of it, Chief, uh, or, or coordinator Terry King. Spoke to uh, the Chief Magistrate Graham to discuss court proceedings. One of the things that, that they were asked to do from the South Carolina Court Administration was to ensure that they had plans on how they were going to handle cases uh, if we started to receive an outbreak here. We spoke with uh, Major Vaughn, who is our, our major at the Sheriff's Office. He's responsible for our jail. You know, we've got, I don't, don't know what our daily population is today, but we've got a bunch of guys that are, and gals that are in a confined space. Their health and well-being is our responsibility. What do we need to do about potential bringing visitation, you know, folks that come in to visit, you know, looking at those plans. So we're having those discussions. Um, so needless to say, and, and, and there's been others in this group that I've had the opportunity to either to have a face-to-face -face meeting with or some phone calls with questions and answering. 
Um, as you can imagine, it's been a short time. This thing has kind of come upon us real quick. Um, you know, we, we have a lot to do, a lot to think about. Um, and, and some of the things that I'd like for us to be doing in, in the planning portion of it is meeting with our municipalities. And I see different various representatives from municipalities, some of which I've already talked with uh, and, and, and met with. We want to come to you. We want to make sure that you're comfortable with what your plans are to see what we could help you do to identify any gaps um, in, in your plans um, and, and make sure that, that everybody's comfortable with what you have in, in response to this particular thing. As I mentioned again, we're going to meet with uh, school districts. Uh, we're going to schedule a meeting with our BOADS. I know our, our volunteer organization groups. I know that uh, I see a couple of you out here. You know, some of you guys are helping feeding those that, that, that are less fortunate and, and things like that. So we need to start be thinking about uh, some of the plans that you're going to be doing and how, is it going, how are you going to go out and feed and provide and take care of individuals that can't make it to pick up a meal and you might be delivering them at home. So we need to be looking at things like that. Um, additionally, we'll be meeting with all of our county department heads to go over our coup to, to make sure everybody's comfortable and confident in their roles within Anderson County. Um, and, and just in a nutshell, I am the emergency management for director for Anderson County. I've got a staff of four people. And I will tell you, and as I mentioned, I've got a brand new citizen of Anderson County who's two days old. And I promise you, there's nothing more important to me than me and my family. They live here in this county. They live here with you. We, we, we provide services to them. They, they attended Anderson District Schools. My wife is an educator. I can promise you, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Anderson County is, is prepared, we will respond appropriately, and that we will recover, recover as, as we should. It's very important also that, that we, being the leaders in this room, that we do this together, that we respond as one county, and we recover as one county, and we continue to prepare in that same manner. And uh, I'm going to ask... Sheriff McBride, come up for just a minute to share just a couple, just a couple of things real quick, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Administrator Rusty Burns. Thank you, David. I was actually here to hear you. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, basically for us, uh, with the sheriff's office, it'll be business as usual. Of course, we'll be monitoring the situation, and uh, luckily we have David Baker, and uh, this county's very blessed to have him, and we're blessed to have him on our staff. So, uh, but you know, we are monitoring a lot of things. You know, big, uh, big issue that a lot of people don't think about is what we're going to do about the uh, jail situation and uh, visitation. I've already talked to Major Vaughn this morning. Uh, the SCDC has already suspended visitation at the prisons. We're probably about to do the same thing. And, of course, you know, we'll probably get some not happy phone calls about that, but uh, that ensures the safety and well-being of uh, the inmates that are in there, but also our officers that work in there as well. So uh, there will be some decisions made like that over the next uh, probably today and as the weekend rolls along. So uh, but that's... That's it. Dave is the foremost expert uh, with this subject matter. We're here to support him and make sure he has the resources that he needs and, of course, make sure that you guys have the resources that you need and we'll be uh, you know, still doing what we do on a daily basis. So, all right. If anybody has any questions for me, I'll turn it back over to him. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Sheriff. All right, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our county administrator, Rusty Burns, to kind of close us out. And I will tell you, because I know some of you have some questions and concerns, um, and if you do, probably before the day's out, if you're in this room, you're going to be getting a meeting invite where we're going to want to come to you. We want to come to you. We want to sit down. We want to address any questions or concerns uh, that you might have in regards to the county's plan, your individual plans, what we can do to help you. Uh, I identify anything, potential gaps, things such as that to, to uh, kind of go forward. Uh, Administrator Burke. Thank you, Dave. 
Thank you all for coming today. Our county council wanted to have this opportunity to bring everybody up to speed so everybody would know where we are. Uh, we are working as Anderson County. Uh, David and I were on the phone last night discussing these issues. I've talked to Steve this morning from Pendleton. So we're trying to cover the whole county, but there's a few things that we wanted to point out today for some hot questions that we've received. One goes back to the jail situation and the visitation. <clears throat> the state has closed visitation there. David, excuse me. Lieutenant General Major Baum. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In regards to the jail, we've got some, uh, today we had 390 people that's inside as a detainee, and then we've got, uh, of course, our staff. So we've been in communication with county leaders, not just with the sheriff's office. We've also, I've talked with the sheriff this morning. A uh, news article came out. We told the SCDC, kind of following their model. Their model is they suspended all visitation, and uh, around 2 o'clock today we'll have a, a decision made today what we were going to do in order to protect our inmates and our officers that are in our facility. Thank you, sir. Richard Shirley, clerk of court. Thank you, Mr. Burns. I would like to take this opportunity with our news media present. We have currently summoned three jury pools to the Anderson County Courthouse for March 23rd, March 30th, and April the 6th. We are canceling jury trials for the 23rd and 30th. We'll make a decision about April the 6th later. But if you have been summoned to the courthouse, I'm not talking about municipal court, I'm not talking about the magistrate's court. If you have been summoned to general sessions or common pleas court, jury duty, March 23rd or March 30th, uh, you do not have to report it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Just to let you know that every department in the county either has or is improving their contingency plan to make operations uh, constant. There will be nobody. Anderson County government's not going to close if there's only one of us here. We're going to operate Anderson County. We've also reached out to uh, our nonprofit groups who do a whole lot for us in Anderson County. Carol, you want to talk about the backpack program in case schools close? How that would, how that would work? Sure, Mr. Burns, I also want to say that thanks to Lieutenant Baker and Steve Combs, we will be gathering representatives from the nonprofit community to United Way to hear much of this same information on Monday because we want everybody to be informed and have the best opportunity to make sure that we take care of the people within Anderson County. Also, in conversation with Mr. Burns, we are going to do everything in our power to ensure that children, if schools were to close, that children will have additional food. Uh, as you know, we provide 800 backpacks filled with food every Friday. We made our last delivery this morning for the rest of the school year. Of, but if additional food is needed, uh, we want to be able to provide that. We know, as I look at the superintendents here, there are many children that the food they get when they get to school for breakfast and lunch may be the only food that they have. We don't want any child to go hungry. So we'll be working with the school districts to do what we can. Of course, that costs additional money. Uh, every bag of food is $5. And we want to make sure the public knows that if they can contribute to this, it is so appreciated because unlike those of us that have an abundance of food, there are children in our community that lack that, and we want to be able to help provide. Lori, Mills on Wheels. Thank you all, Mr. Burns. Um, Mills on Wheels is um, in contact with other Mills on Wheels programs across the area, the state of South Carolina, as well as across the nation. And we are um, working together to prepare information. Um, obviously, we follow DHEC guidelines, so we um, are vamping up and making sure that we are doing extra cleaning in our facility to make sure that 
our volunteers that come into our facility as well as our food that goes out is safe. Um, we have congregate meal sites that we deliver to across the county and we're working with them at any point if they plan to close. We um, are checking with them. We already have one site that's closed and we've checked with that facility and made sure that if those people need food we'll get that to them whether it's um, a frozen meal packet for a certain amount of time or if it's um, a shelf stable meal packet that we'll get those out to those folks um, as they need that. Um, as well as our home delivered meals we um, hope that we'll have volunteers that will continue to volunteer for us. If we have folks that will not, we'll figure that out as we go. We've got um, some other folks that have already called in that are in the senior industry that are saying, um, you know, if they're, as their facilities are um, closing to let um, folks into their facilities, they have some extra time that they can help with us. So they are stepping up to the plate to volunteer and help us um, in the next few weeks. So we're just monitoring as best we can and plan to continue to serve um, the 500 people across Anderson County home delivered meals that we serve. Uh, thank you, Chairman Dunn, for providing this opportunity for us to get together. Mr. Burns, Director, for the information. We really appreciate that. Uh, from the city's position, we're very aligned with the county and the operations. And so, Rusty, uh, Mr. Burns, and I have been and we'll stay in constant communication as far as our operations. Uh, we both run detention centers. Uh, both respond to police, law enforcement, EMS, medical calls uh, from a fire standpoint with us. And so we'll continue to monitor it. From our employee standpoint, we're taking uh, some of the measures, uh, many of the measures that director recommended in the, um, in the PowerPoint presentation to us to protect our employees. That's the, that's the first most thing, uh, very important for us. Don't have them, they get sick, not able to serve the community. So that's very important for us to do that. Uh, but we'll continue our operations and uh, then we'll also probably be making some decisions uh, next week if things were to change on some of, um, some of our activities, public activities that we have that are, that are not essential to public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> I'll also let you know that our EMS <clears throat> department is making sure that all of our ambulances are working well and we're following all protocols, so we're doubling down on our efforts on that. <clears throat> and. Uh, just to let you know, we're here as the county. That's what our council wants to do. And per Chairman Dunn, this is the last large meeting we're going to have in, with this many people to make sure that we don't give it to each other. Uh, Dave, you want to end it up? Thank y'all for coming. Yes. And that's a good point. One of the things we want to do so we stay in good communication is, is we will continue to push information to you via email. Um, we will, again, be reaching out to schedule opportunities to come to speak with you at your individual locations and we'll probably be wanting to do some either some uh, webinars or, or maybe conference calling probably on a weekly basis until we can and that may increase uh, you know depending on uh, our current local situation but to give you an idea real quick on numbers as I was asked that earlier again that was one of those things that we were hoping DHEC being present could provide to us there are six confirmed cases in the state of South Carolina. I know we've seen a number of 10. 10 includes, I think, some presumptive cases. Kershaw and Lancaster, I think, were confirmation areas. We currently have no confirmed cases or presumptive cases here in Anderson County. I want to share that information. One last thing, David. Yes. Faith, we've received a number of calls about the library. Yes. And Faith is here to respond to that for us. Thanks, Rusty. The library will continue to be open, and that's what we're there for, and we'll do everything we can to do it. We are upping our cleaning, as everybody else is, trying to make sure that it's as safe for our staff and the patrons. Um, we are, same thing with our meeting, meeting rooms, they'll be open as long as we can. If we see there's an issue, we'll, we'll do it. We're monitoring everything, and we'll be working with um, emergency services. We are also looking at, we've had some issues. What about the homeless? They're there a lot. They are. They're welcome. Everybody is welcome into the library. We're doing everything to, we can to protect our staff and our patrons, and we'll continue to do that, and we will continue to stay on top of it. My staff is working hard to make sure they're staying in touch with each other and also with other libraries around the state to make sure that we're all following the best practices. It's a good chance to talk about all of the online things. Yes, thank you very much. I should have mentioned that. I'm glad he reminded me. We do have a tremendous amount of uh, online resources. You just have to go to our AndersonLibrary.org. You can, you can download books, you can do research. If you have kids that are going to be at home, they can go online and find a lot of research and uh, information that they're going to need to fill out the, all that homework they're going to get at home. But if you just want to read a book, listen to a book, read a magazine, you can do that online. 
whatever you need. You want to do genealogy at home while you're, if somebody's sitting at home, we've got it all there. So just go to AndersonLibrary.org and see all the great things we have. Thank you, Faith. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. Don't shake anybody's hand. Have a good, <laughs> healthy rest of the day and year. Thank you. 211 is an information line open to everyone in our community. On a normal basis, people call in to find out how they can get assistance for food, uh, for help with rent or mortgage, or help with their utility bill. During this time, as information is available from the DHEC and other organizations, our 211 line will have additional information regarding the situation with the virus that is currently at hand. And if people do want to donate, I don't think we got the place. Where can they donate for the, the, the bags? Tell them about the food bags again, just so we're talking about Yes. Well, one of the things that United Way does is we feed 800 children every Friday. Uh, they get a bag of food that hopefully carries them over for a weekend when they are food insecure. Uh, we made our last delivery this morning, Friday morning, to last for the 10 weekends to follow for the rest of the school year. In the event that children are not going to school, regardless of what we think, there will be children who are dependent on breakfast and lunch at school who will go hungry. Um, we do not want that to happen. United Way stands with the county and other organizations to say we want to be able to provide extra food for those children that may not have it because school is not in session due to the virus. So if people would like to help us, every one of those bags costs five dollars. At 100% of the five dollars goes for the food products. If you'd like to do that, there are several different ways. You can go to our website, www.unitedwayofanderson.org, and you can donate at $5, $25, $50, whatever amount you feel you can do. Also, you can come by our office and drop off a check. We're located at 604 North Murray Avenue, downtown Anderson, or you can call us and let us know. We can give you a text to give number or you can mail us a check at Post Office Box 2067, Anderson, South Carolina, 29622. We appreciate how the community works with us to provide services to the least of those in our community. I'm Laurie Ashley with Mills on Wheels Anderson, and we are here to discuss the COVID-19 virus. Mills on Wheels here in Anderson has been in touch with Mills on Wheels across the state as well as across the nation and monitoring what um, our other agents and co-agencies are doing um, to help our situation. Here in our office we are vamping up our cleaning routine. We are making sure that not only are we, as we always do, follow DHEC guidelines, but we're making sure that we do some extra cleaning as well. Uh, we are preparing extra uh, frozen meals so that if we have a situation where we need to send some out to folks we can do that. We also deliver to the congregate dining sites across Anderson County and we are monitoring those situations. Uh, we do have one site, Honey and Path, that has closed so we have checked with all of the folks that attend the sites and make sure that they are prepared with food themselves and um, we will continue to do that as, as needs to be done with the sites that might close. Uh, as far as delivering to our um, home delivered meals, we are monitoring our volunteers, asking them to let us know if they at all feel uncomfortable delivering, and just monitoring the situation as to how we're going to deliver out to our, our recipients throughout the um, time frame that this happens. We have some folks that have stepped up to the plate and said that they are willing to help us um, that are going to sub in when we need them to sub in, and we are just going to Remind people how many people you serve and what y'all need now, because this could hurt donations. I don't know if y'all okay. talked about that across the street, but I guess people are worried it's going to hurt donations. Right. Mills on Wheels delivers to the homebound elderly, and we serve 500 people a day. We do this through um, mainly donations across Anderson County, and so we are definitely concerned about the donation process and how people might be affected um, and the donations that might be affected with COVID virus. So if we um, can ask you to do one thing, it's to consider continuing to donate to Meals on Wheels and not let the folks that we serve go hungry. Remind them where to donate. You can donate online to our website. It's acmow.org 
or you can call into our office with your credit card information or you can stop by to our office. It's 105 South Fence Street in Anderson. Throw out the phone number so we'll have it on. I can just, we'll have to look it up. Okay. What's the phone number? 225 6800. Thanks, Mark. Remind what everybody's doing at Anderson School District 5 in relation to this virus. Yeah, Anderson 5, uh, currently, one thing we've done is we've stopped all out of district field trips. Uh, that's really the first thing we've done. We're in constant contact with DHEC and the State Department of Education. They've asked all districts in the state to consult with them before any closure decisions are made. One thing we're doing and, have, you know, we really have been doing for quite some time is uh, building upon our e-learning plan. Obviously, we were, the, we were the first district in the state to have e-learning, which was great for us. It really gives us a head start in a lot of ways uh, for this situation. Uh, so we're, you know, prepared to utilize that if needed. Uh, the state sent out something actually to prepare, you know, even up to 10 days. So that's something we're preparing for. Uh, actually, uh, today, a lot of people mentioned about feeding and food. One thing we're prepared to do is to mobilize our summer feeding program. Actually, we have a very successful summer feeding program where we actually have food uh, and we bring it out to some of our low-income neighborhoods. Uh, so that's something that our culinary services department has been working on all week is really kind of mobilizing that and adding to it, really, uh, if need be. Because as mentioned, you know, providing food is, you know, a key aspect of what we do with the school system. And, you know, if we were shut down for any, you know, period of time, you'd want to make sure, that, you know, a lot of these children still receive food. So if it did extend, y'all are prepared to do e-learning for a while? Yeah, we're prepared to do e-learning. Uh, obviously, you know, just like everybody else, we'd like to kind of get back in the building as soon as we can because, you know, it's hard to do something like that for an extended period of time. Plus, it's never been tested for that long. Uh, but we think we're in a great position to, uh, to carry on that for, you know, a few weeks if need be. Uh, our teachers are preparing. We're sending home devices. Uh, we're in a great position. Uh, obviously, we're in really a more favorable position than most just because we've had it for so long. We have the devices. We have the capability. Uh, so, you know, we're ready to, to, to execute that if needed. You mentioned some of the stuff to, to the crowd just now, but tell me about some of the challenges y'all have facing something like this at a place y'all are already busy. We're already busy. We're already overcrowded. We have over 390 individuals in our facility, not counting staff. What we've done, we've stepped up our sanitation measures, making sure that uh, all the cleaning products are available to the to the inmates within their cells, things of that nature. And y'all made a decision that what y'all going to do moving forward. Moving forward, we've been in communication with the South Carolina Department of Corrections, and we're pretty much going to follow their lead with the uh, cancelization of our counseling, uh, visitation, and our volunteer programs and monitor it up to 30 days. And so that is, this is going to be a continual monitoring thing to see how things go, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you feel like, I think we're the first county in the state or the only county in the state to have something like this, a meeting like this. Why was it important for Anderson County to take the lead here? I think uh, just communications. I've always said whatever, whatever you might be doing, doing in life, dealing with communications is everything. And so we've had some uh, phone calls and some inquiries, and so we hopefully put some of this to bed today to let people know what's going on, and the government is going to be open, and we're going to try to do business as usual, but we uh, got plans we're implementing. Plus, though, we are waiting and seeing how things go, and we'll change and uh, drop back and punt and do some other things we need to. Did you ever think in all your years on county council you'd be facing a pandemic? <laughs> no, no, no. And it's, I mean, it has really snowballed very quickly. Yes, sir. Uh, um, you know, it was a, it was a good opportunity. I think we were in, a, we're in a good position right now to, uh, we've had a lot of sidebar meetings, a lot of conversations um, with our uh, leadership throughout Anderson County, our municipalities, um, school districts, things like that. Uh, it was a good opportunity to bring everybody together under one roof while we don't have a current uh, I, I, the threats here anytime our, our state has a threat sure it is but um, I think it was a unique opportunity for us to bring everybody together under one roof for, for a quick meeting face to face because I had a lot of those requests um, for, for good face to face uh, have good dialogue and conversation and exchange of information and we look forward to uh, continuing that after as, as you heard councilman Dunn hey you know and, and probably need to start planning on those things being um, a little more isolated, a little more conference, and, and you know, we had those discussions um, last week, and, you know, because a lot of people were concerned, hey, you know, you're bringing all the leadership in one room, and uh, again, I think we're, it, we're in a unique position today, that may not be the case next week, next week. so we're already kind of planning ahead on how those future conversations are going to take place. Well, a lot of this is based on planning y'all had already done in case yes, something sir. like this happens, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And you feel pretty confident that moving ahead, we're in a good place for our planning situation? 
Yes, sir, I do. Um, I'm very confident in our plans. The state has a, has a, a great plan that, that's constantly, just, just like us, when we review plans, we're, we're, we're updating, uh, revising, we're wanting, wanting to be current, uh, effective plans, almost like a good cookbook. You know, you, if, at the end of the day, you, 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 you want to eat something that's good. Our plan is the same way. Uh, you know, it, 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 it gives you the, 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 the meat and potatoes of, of what we need to do here uh, within Anderson County to, um, uh, for planning purposes, responding and recovering. And, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to take those plans, make sure they're the most effective that, you know, for us here in Anderson County, they're, that, that they're adaptable if anything changes. Um, we're constantly reviewing and revising so that we can have things up to date. South Carolina plans, like I said, I mentioned before, I printed it off and read it uh, a couple weekends ago um, when we were actually down, down at the uh, South Carolina Emergency Managers Conference. Um, having good conversations with our neighbors and, and discussing what they're doing planning-wise, um, we want to we be very consistent in the upstate and in, in our, our, our region and how we're doing things together. Um, we're one county, we want to plan together, we want to respond together, and we want to recover together. And I think that's why it was very important to get this group together today.